they were drawing uh, the dust which was eaten by horses they were uh, drawing the smoke which is coming out of the car if the car catches fire they were drawing the fire also during that time so it was as a whole package it was called an animation so there was no uh, separate thing as okay i am the one who does fire so i am a fire animator there was no such thing like that but with the uh, with onset of computers and uh, when we started uh, you know uh, with computer so it was very difficult to work with fire and smoke which was more dynamic so it was very difficult to control as an animator so we have computers we have algorithm we have scripts uh, we have uh, certain presets in uh, softwares like maya or max or uh, blender so there are a lot of stuff which is already ready made there which is there inside so what we do is uh, uh animators do the work of animating so where where we come in is when we want to make the character walk we want to make the character jump we want to express some emotions so this is the job of animators what the animators are not doing is fire effects they are not doing the smoke effects they are not doing modeling they were not they are not painting the the, the model they are not doing water they were not doing cloth so that is not part of animation although it is called as animation movie because it has been uh, said since like generations so even now all cg movies are called animated movies but now you know i feel that animator's job is to just moving the characters be it car even a car they animate they can add animate all quadrupeds but as long as it is not fx it is not dynamic animators are not doing that yeah do yeah. retreat uh, you mean to say like initially one person was just like drawing on the caves and all this so one person will do everything and now you mean to say that uh, a person who wants to be an artist does not have to necessarily do everything is is that like yes uh, yes okay. yes yes so uh, how how will the person know like what they want to do then if you need to that question yeah it's a good so uh, the thing is uh, you have to uh, like i said earlier you have to know your strengths huh? so uh, if you think you can really are very good with animation you can definitely be an animator if you think you are good with sketching and you can model very well in uh, in a software and uh, you can uh, start with modeling and when you think you are you want to do vfx where you uh, want to do some cool fire effects some fancy explosions you want to do that is the time you try to pursue uh, vfx as a career but mind you uh, an artist whoever who is joining a company if he is joining as a animator he is not required to do anything else uh nowadays there are like lot of terms and i feel it's good also that people are getting aware through this thing and lot of publicity around uh, some catchy terms like vfx or mocap or animator so is it like animator uh, as you already cleared uh, that up like animator would be only animating in yes, the studio yes, yes. and is it is it important for a animator to join a course which teaches like vfx also or is it like which is better like some people ask that like which is better i want to be an animator or mm -hmm. i should be a vfx artist mm -hmm. or how will like if someone is watching and they want to understand what they are good at so mm -hmm. what direction they should go mm -hmm. in like according to you like what do you feel uh, yes yeah, so if you want to be an animator i think it's it's a very good idea to just join the animation course because uh, to be an animator all you require is the certain set of tools which we will teach here uh, just that learning those tools you will get a job as an animator in the industry but it's not required to do uh, a vfx course as well it's it's not definitely it is not required okay. no one is asking you uh, if you are applying for a job as an animator in a in a studio uh, they will not say do you know vfx do you know modeling uh, if you do not know it's uh, sorry we cannot hire there there's no such thing there's no such thing for a modeler only requirement for him is that he should know modeling it is not required that he should know fx or he should know animation for a modeler only modeling is let's uh, let's lead that uh, to the next question uh, which i want to ask is in your in your journey in your experience 
were there times when uh, what, what was your main role first part of the question is what was your main role like when you enter the studio and by the time you exit the studio in the evening mm-hmm. what was the role what all roles macro roles micro roles what were you doing were you just like if, if someone else was giving you the ray got shot ready and then you would just animate or would they invite you to different departments and and second part is uh, can there be some situations uh, where a person might be invited into other roles also i hope this part uh, will answer should answer most of your questions yes 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 that's a, that's i think it's a, it's a it right hits the nail uh, nail on the head uh, the thing is when you uh, go into like when i remember i when i started uh, first day also i remember uh, i think initially they will not give you a uh, lot of work initially they will ask you to you know get a scrap custom to the uh, company's pipeline and uh, how things run around and uh, where is the server and how you you know browse through computer to server where you access all the files and all that so probably around two weeks or one month there is nothing you can do only get you know comfortable with the surrounding meet with people and there will be you know, certain uh, coordination team which will help you to you know coordinate with other departments also so they will you know involve you and uh, you know mm. uh, give you a tour around the studio with various heads and supervisors and all that but when it comes to animation so what will you do is when you get a shot to work uh, they will tell you okay what is the requirement for the shot so uh, what happens is uh, most of the time when i have worked uh, the director is not here in india they are working from abroad so they will record the session of what they want for a particular shot so they will give you that recording so what you do is take the recording and just uh, go through it so you will have an understanding what the director wants in that shot and uh, then what you do is uh, search for the storyboard there are self storyboards for that shot so you get a rough idea of how the character is placed in the shot because the storyboard artist has already taken feedback from the directors so storyboard has artist has a pretty good idea of how the pose should be in your shot so he has drawn according to the directors so you i try to you know take that pose and try to pose my 3d model according to it and then we get audio which is there and uh, what you do is see what is there in the previous shot and see what is there in the next shot what was the actor uh, your character doing in the previous shot and what will he do in the next shot so you combine that and you have a very good idea of what you are supposed to do in this shot so from uh, what i understand and i guess i am saying on behalf of everyone so please uh, feel free to ask like any questions if you might have we'll uh, love to take those questions also but from uh, i guess what we understood uh, instagram audience and what we understood you mean to say that uh, your role was very specific to when you go on desk okay to understand it was very niche role that you have to develop a observation power you have to understand the story understand this thing take the directive of the director and all this things like exactly. very 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 specific you know exactly so. okay so uh, what additional skills uh, and uh, this also right. has two parts what additional skills it had uh, uh, there are required for uh, students like is it like some sketching would help out or modeling will help out or under observation power will help out or what is really required skills and what is something extra that uh, people should avoid and put more time into getting better in animation if you want to explain yes so there are see apart from animation uh, i won't say there are compulsory skills that if you know the skill if you are skillful in sketching if you are skillful in drawing if you are skillful in modeling then only you can be animated there is no compulsory skill i would say that only thing is it, it is definitely an added advantage if you know a bit of sketching i'm talking about terms of animation specific if you know if you know sketching if you know a bit of uh, uh, posing if you know a bit of if uh, drawing facial expressions and all if you have copied cartoon expressions from uh, asterix if you have copied uh, cartoon expressions from tintin if you copy it cartoon expression from bugs bunny or uh, uh, tom and jerry then you get to learn a lot from those expression because exactly those expressions we are going to um, uh, use in uh, in uh, in our in our shot this see uh, mind you these are all things which just gets fed up at the back of your head if your mind it's not that uh, if i have not drawn or have not done anything i cannot animate we can definitely animate only thing is sometimes you know uh, uh, what is really appealing in an animation 
is not visible so much because of your lack of understanding of of, of sketching. But here in AID, what we do, we definitely have uh, sketching classes. We have arts classes for students where they, uh, you know, go through that process. Initially, they feel that, um, uh, you know, uh, is it required to do art classes or sketching classes? But by the by, the middle of the course, they really feel the importance of that. When when they start working on the face, they will feel, ah, sir, it, it really helped. That sketching idea would definitely help. Mm -hmm. yes. So we have got one uh, very interesting question. Do animators and VFX artists work together or there are different departments, different floor? According to your experience, what you have seen, like mm -hmm. do they like sit together or any two departments or mm -hmm. VFX artists and animators especially? Mm -hmm. like, that was the question. So what, what would you? Yes. So uh, uh, where I was working before, uh, there were two floors. And I tell you, uh, in one floor where animators and uh, layout department was there, and on the second floor, we had an VFX department and uh, some lighting department. So we we hardly interacted. Uh, only during the weekends, when we know people, we would meet and we would we would talk. But during the day, we we, we hardly interacted. So uh, this is not so much related. Okay, animators can work independently. VFX artists are working independently. Even if they don't see each other <laughs> during that whole month, nothing will stop their work. Nothing will stop their work. So, so it's a totally different. Thing. Next question we have got is like, what tools an animator must know to begin as an animator? Are there any specific softwares, tools, what people watching yeah, should actually? Yes. So uh, tools are just uh, dependent on the software. So there are various software tools on animation. One is definitely Maya. Uh, Blender is catching up. Then there is Max, and there are uh, other uh, other 3D softwares also, if you want. Uh, but what you can do is any one software, if you master for animation specific, I'm saying all we require for animation is the principles. So what we teach here is a principle. If you master those principles, everything is just tools, right? If you know C plus plus. You can do programming with Java, we can do programming with Python, and we can do programming with Perl and whatever other software. Is that only thing will vary is syntax will vary here and there a bit different. Same thing with Maya, with Blender, with Max, with SoftImage, or every other soft several software. What you do, uh, what is required to have a strong foundation for animation. Because when I started, for two years I worked on Max. And two years I was working on Max, and when I switched to another company, they were working on Maya. And I tell you, there was hardly any question when I applied there. They asked me where you worked and what software I worked. And uh, I said I worked on so and so company, and I worked on Max, and I do not know Maya. That was very specific. They said it does not matter because it's just a set of tools. He said, anyways, one month we are not asking you to do anything. Just you know, brush up on your Maya skills. And I tell you, in one month, I just caught up with Maya. Because if I have to lift an arm from this position to this position, okay, I have to physically take the arm from here to here. Right? And software is just telling me how to you know, take the arm from here to here. But the timing sense, is it fast or is it slow? That is the animation sense. And my animation sense was clear. So software was never uh, any hindrance for me. OK, so software, guys. Don't be, you know, bogged down by, oh, this is a, a catchy software, this is an important software, or this is a popular software after that. You can learn through any software and you can apply in company in any software. They will not, all they look is for your skill. So that leads to the next question. A lot of times uh, when, when someone is starting out and they are looking for institutes and all and someone says, okay, we, we focus, if one institute says we focus on making you a good animator mm -hmm. versus someone says that mm -hmm. we focus on teaching you like getting you equipped with like 10 software, 15 mm -hmm. software. So, so you mean to say like they should prefer a uh, skill over the uh, tools or yeah. according to you like if you want to. Yes, this is, yeah, this is one thing I think uh, this is sort of a trap or uh, I don't know how to call it, but students, they do fall into it. So what happens is they go in several places and they uh, see what are they teaching. So what they have is numbers. So they will say, ah, we are teaching you five softwares. And then they go to another college and they say, no, we are teaching you 10 softwares. And some other college will say, no, we are teaching you two softwares. 
but we are trying to you know uh, make you as a uh, good animator so we are not spending time on teaching softwares what we are spending time is to make you a quality artist okay uh, softwares like i said again guys softwares does not matter i am i was talking in terms of uh, animation if i talk in terms of modeling also i will say i have seen so good modelers who have worked on softwares which are not mainstream industry they are working on free softwares at home which are very basic softwares and they are very good at modeling and they when they apply in a company they see that portfolio they say yeah, this is good modeling but he will say no i do not know maya i do not know mudbox i do not know zbrush what do i do company says don't worry about that all we care is your observation skill as good your sketching skills are good your modeling skills are good software is irrelevant again okay? so don't fall for the trap of uh, uh, learning a lot of softwares lot of softwares will not help you only thing uh, where you uh, for, for example is a one year is course uh, six months you spend on just learning softwares and six months you actually work on being a quality artist but in an institute who focuses on making you quality of course uh, artist will teach you one or two softwares in one or two months and rest eight months or less nine months or uh, next 10 months will be making you a quality artist so focus on being a quality artist guys right? don't focus on learning software learning software is so easy these days i i tell you i have learned softwares like uh, uh, after effects premiere in uh, two weeks on sitting on youtube these are all technical things okay but how to make appealing uh, caricatures how to make appealing drawings uh, that software will not teach you so let's help the students who are watching uh, right now and maybe like someone wants to pursue it is a career furthermore with like already you have shared a lot of uh, light on what they should avoid what they should go for and all this thing i, I hope like this all is helpful for you guys let's uh, take it to next level by asking what good questions students or their parents can ask if they are going for if they are going for uh, uh, some uh, like institute if if you guys are going for some institute let's see from uh, gautam sir what he has to say like how uh, what kind of questions how you would able to know like if an institute is good for you or mm -hmm. if they would care for you or like uh, what kind of questions you guys can ask and how how you can know like how transparent they are uh, in communicating all that to you so uh, what do you have to say about that? yes a very important question because they will just uh, you know uh, see the jazz and see that how many softwares are you know being taught in that institute but what matters is a quality faculty so what questions you'll be asking you should be asking in an institute is uh, oh, what are the teachers doing right now what were they doing do they have industry experience or not sometimes what happens the lot of uh, teachers uh, they do not have much industry experience and they start teaching uh, and when they're teaching they do not have the outlook of you know uh, client customer relation because since uh, me and gurleen sir have are from the industry we know what uh, director is looking for what a client is looking for so we approach a shot in that terms even pipeline is very important so if i am working on a studio and i come accustomed to the pipeline in in a studio and several other studios i see almost the same kind of pipeline is followed in every other so we try to teach the students the same pipeline and the same workflow like how to you know divide your and i'm talking in terms of and how to divide your animation shot first is this pass second is the complexity level goes even deeper third even more and then at the end you do very polishing stuff and very uh, like a 10% stuff where you can make your shot shine so ask questions like where are uh, what are the faculties how much industry experience they have ask what are the softwares they are teaching uh, ask how much time they are spending on teaching softwares and how much time they are uh, you know working on uh, learning creative aspects of software because softwares are just tools so if, for example if you are taking photoshop uh, learning photoshop so you can what you can learn is how to create layers how to you know merge layers how to give effects on the layers but what is more appealing only an industry guy who has several years of experience who has learned from uh, uh, good artists throughout his career will know what is appealing 
and what is more creative so ask these questions uh, don't go for like i have to learn because there uh, i mean i have to go join here because there are uh, uh, so many softwares i've been uh, uh, learning there and all that and they are taking so much money uh, so they should teach more software don't go all this because learning software i tell you two weeks you can learn any software because they're just tools if you keep learning on particular software on anything be more creative if you are creative you can push the software again and again to its more 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 uh, so so that it makes more sense because uh, there was one uh, thing where i was uh, jumping onto another software and what i felt this option is missing in this software because i wanted certain kind of effect then i went to a person who knew that software and i asked him i want this option he said oh yes yes this option is here instead of that so i knew that i wanted that option software was not telling me software just was that option was hidden somewhere else it, because the tool is different so you have to know that an output and if for that output uh, where are the tools and that tool will be available on internet or it can be an arms reach from your colleague a very interesting i hope that answers uh, most of the questions uh, let's uh, take another one which is on vfx again uh any example of pure animation versus vfx you can give like uh, so everyone understands uh, like what vfx is about what animation is about any example from uh vfx versus animation kind yeah, of any yeah. movie any tv series what is like vfx and what is the animation so pure animation just mm-hmm. hand create animation mm-hmm. versus vfx so it will uh, the question is because like they'll understand uh, better yes. what they have to choose or what they actually like yeah for example if you take a, a movie you are incredible so you have seen the movie incredible initially when he is fighting syndrome and uh, you see there is a lot of you know he, he fires uh, laser jets uh, laser at him and he sorts of dodges so whenever he was jumping around here and there that was pure animation and that laser that light beam which was coming out from his hand and it was causing an explosion that was all vfx and when he was you know he jumped on a mountain and then he jumped onto a river or or i think mm-hmm. it was a pond or something so that splash when he was entering so at the time when he was you know falling was at all that was animation and the moment he enters water and he falls inside and that big splash is there and when he's swimming so all that swimming is animation but the bubbles inside that that was all vfx the movement of water around him that was all vfx so uh, there's a definitely so, a big contrast with so animation. so you mean to say like they should understand that uh, are they actually interested in animating the effects out of that uh, effects like water effect fire effect laser effect mm-hmm. all those effects and all this thing mm-hmm. or because vfx uh, can you elaborate on like what is the full form of vfx because it's a cool term nowadays but what does it even mean yeah <laughs> vfx fx is basically your e f f e c t s that is fx v is vi- visual right so, uh, so instead of calling visual fx we call it vfx so it has uh, become yeah. vfx so, so every time you're talking about uh, vfx you're talking about uh, how visually it is dazzling and so effects uh, not the animation you mean yes, yes yes so if someone is running uh, let me just uh, take it to one step if yes. someone is running mm-hmm. so if if someone wants to do some acting or some running or something so they should join vfx or they should join animation yeah so uh, short answer is they should not join <laughs> animation because every time you are involving your limbs you are running involving your facial, facial expression for showing sadness or happiness or conveying any feeling that is all uh, all animation so that is the time you have to join animation so but if you want to do uh fancy cloth move like uh, character for example if i'm sitting if i am an animated body if i have been animated you will see if i am animated so all this movement which is happening is done by an animator but if my hair is moving is suppose some fan is there and hair is moving so that is done by a fx guy which is a cloth fx guy uh sorry hair of exact and then if uh, some wrinkles are if i move forward if i move back if i stretch my arm so you see my arm cloth is reacting to the way i am moving that is the department of the cloth so that is the cfx guy so that is a cloth fx 
and if i am drinking water from from a glass and that water movement you can see that is uh, fluid effects guys so those are guys who are working with uh, fluids particles like uh, mm -hmm. fire is also treated as fluid uh, water is also treated as fluid uh, mush mush yeah, something mud or some wall uh, is there if i punch the wall how it breaks and falls down those are come those will come into Uh, VFX. So, who all are inquiring about the VFX? I guess, like from what you have explained to us till now, they should ask themselves first. I feel is yes. it right? Correct me. Like, what yes. are they interested? Yes. Yeah, so, so the thing is, uh, what happens uh, most of the time, they have a uh, like I said, there's a confusing no notion of animation. So, they think animation is apart from just moving the body. It is also about uh, doing water, fire, and cloth and hair. and they think if i if they are going to apply in a studio uh, they should be knowing all this but i i am telling you all this is not required definitely not required uh, be very specific what you want to learn we if you want to learn animation and some other uh, college is saying we are teaching animation along with vfx but you are in interest in animation just learn animation because that is where you will get your job animation uh, if you apply for a job if a company has a vacancy for animator and you go and say i know animation i know vfx also uh, but that time they will say no no how good are you at animation he said no i know understand animation but i am good at uh, vfx but that is the time they will not be very keen on hiring you because what they want is a guy who is competent with animation skills same thing for vfx if you say i i've learned like two months of vfx but uh, i am actually a professional animator so they will not be very keen So there is another question: Can one person learn all, do all? Yes, uh, it depends on how, uh, where are you doing it. It's uh, sometimes a, a student or or a guy who's taking a break from a company, or he's working for five years straight and he wants to take a break. Uh, so he can do like everything he wants to do. He can do lighting, he can do modeling, he can do. But depends on how much time frame you have, because even for making a Five minute animation movie. At least one year is required. Two years is required to, because you have to do modeling. I mean, you have to make a structure of the body. Then you have to do rigging where you put in joints in that. Then you have to move it. So once you're doing the movement, once you're done with the animation, what you do? Uh, okay, this certain character has hair. Uh, this certain character has cloth. You do cloth and you do fur and you do hair. And then you say, okay, everything is done now. Let's light the shot. So you will be lighting the shot. So it's not feasible that one guy. It's definitely one guy can do, but uh, in a studio, definitely one guy cannot do. Because if one guy wants to do this, they will take. Uh, if you want to make a one and a half hour movie, at least eight years, ten years, you will require to do it, everything by yourself. So it has been divided as departments. Animator, I am only concerned about moving the character. Cloth guy, he is concerned about the cloth. Uh, the fire and the smoke guy he is only concerned about the so everything is running parallelly so while i am doing or almost doing my animation my lighting is already started if i am driving or if i am uh, uh, sitting in a car driving the guy who is making smoke in the car is already started to work on it so since these things run parallelly so the whole frame length of the movie reduces because it has been run parallelly so uh, to answer that question you can do it but depending on how rich you are time wise and money wise also because this is uh, the cg world is quite a, a expensive world costly world. because you have to have uh, legal software also so mm -hmm. that is another question uh, we'll wrap up in another 5 minutes so we'll take like a couple of question i can see over here one question is uh, from uh, tagaram uh, he wants to ask diploma versus degree question like it always yeah comes. so you want to do diploma or you want to degree so yeah. uh, see degree will always help you in long run uh, because uh, what happens is uh, if if you are you know have gained sufficient experience in this industry here uh, like you worked for 3 4 years 5 years or something you want to go abroad what happens when your visa process is there so when they see the visa process and they say oh no you have just passed out your 12th you're not your degree so your point that are points are allocated to allocated to these uh, these skills okay and if you just say okay i just uh, pass out of my 10th or pass out of my 12th and now i want to go abroad so your uh, 
uh, this thing is reduced the whole points are reduced so definitely i would say degree is a very good uh, choice if you're not uh, done degree for people who have done degree for for example me i have i am a i have a degree in, uh, in electronics but i mm-hmm. like animation so i have come here so i for that for those people who wants to you know uh, suddenly change their diploma is also good but anyways uh, depends on you if you do not care much of degree or going out and you want to work here diploma is also good okay so it's you have to ask that question to yourself if someone is into engineering or their parents have told them just do one course first then you see like what you have to do for yourself we had i think two students we who passed out and they are working yes. actually <laughs> they are yes. working in animation studios right now and they were both engineers so i tell you uh, and he wanted to please his parents they said do engineering first and then you want to try you try i will give you one two years for that so yeah. those guys they did the engineering they passed out at i'm telling you very good ranks they had but they wanted to do animation they joined a diploma course very serious they worked and they created a good portfolio and i'm telling you after they passed out not even one month they took to get a job they both are as engineers they are working as animators and like i'm a live example i was a electronics uh, degree guy and i'm working in animation <laughs> so very nicely answered uh, that part uh, another uh, one we have over here which is which i would like to rephrase this part uh, we have got a question are animators underpaid or overburdened but i would like to rephrase this question as uh, what animators do the animation course and don't get job like what is the difference because we time to time we see like there are a lot of mm-hmm. institutes and who claim to teach animation who might teach like a lot of softwares but uh, it's a, just a rephrase of this thing because yes uh, there are people who call them as animators and they are kind of underpaid sometimes and but what is the difference and it might lead back to from where we started to make it a full circle of like how to choose a good studio yes, yes. how to choose a good institute right yes, yes. so are animators underpaid or overburdened or what uh, when someone is doing animation what they have to be very careful about from where they are doing and all yes there are two aspects one is definitely one is that that where you are coming from uh, if you are if you are really good at your work they say uh, in in our industry when we were animating uh, we never called it at work we were not working we were having fun because mm-hmm. if i am really enjoying doing animation i would not feel it as overburdened because for me it was fun if you if i am a very good sketch artist eh, and if some or i am from a very good painter and someone is telling me no uh, uh, are you working over time i see you working it late at night if you see me over burdened i will say no i am actually enjoying it so for me it is not quite over burdened so uh, it depends on that also and underpaid is uh, we will not call it as generic statement that they are overburdened or underpaid because there are people who may be underpaid and overburdened and there are people who are not underpaid who are paid handsomely and they are not overburdened at all why i am saying is because they are so good at their work they come into the studio instead of person who takes 5 days to do that shot they do it in one or two days and the quality is also good that the studio recognizes that and they pay them good salary so bottom line be good at your work put your heart put your soul in the work we have a question from riya ghosh she ask uh, i am fascinated with environments mm-hmm. matte paintings fascinates me mm-hmm. uh, where does this fit in uh, the animation versus vfx spectrum yeah so matte painting is uh, totally different is again another department just like we have a department of animation we have a department of modeling where you you know draw the model matte painting is another department so this can definitely come into texturing department where you are not just matte painting where you are drawing the backgrounds because lot of time what happens uh, for people who do not know what is matte painting i'll just briefly talk about matte painting what happens in matte painting is see suppose if i am standing in a, in a, on a mountain or or a very scenic location so few trees are modeled definitely uh, leaves are modeled and all that some river is you know they've done fluid of it but sometimes what happens it is very expensive to model everything which is seen behind me there are several mountains there are a bunch of trees which is there on the mountain there are clouds on the on, on the sky so you do not want to model or you do not want to create effects for that 
otherwise you can create effects in uh, you can create clouds in effects also so what cheaper way is to do a matte painting where uh, artists sit and they will draw a fake mountain which looks like 3d they will draw a fake tree and obviously they are very good artists so they will make that 2d as 3d they are so good at it and they will draw clouds also so that drawing of a background or a, or a, or a building or or anything that is called matte painting matte painting is not just uh, this uh, specific kind of and even gaming they do a lot of matte painting there are so many places in matte painting. so what you do to do is if you're very good with uh, 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 drawing or sketching or painting you think you are then matte painting is definitely for you so you can also go for texturing also. because uh, if uh, when a modeler finishes the modeling it is all gray okay there is no color and half everything in that so what you do in that uh, texturing department takes over the gray model and they start painting that model and try to give you small wrinkles try to give you small you know uh, pigments here and there to make it very realistic so i think we are for vfx uh, sorry for matte painting artists you want to explore texturing department also because uh, matte painting again is a slightly niche department because there are not a lot of students who hire matte painters so if you know matte painting and if you know texturing both i think the the, the scope is more for you very nice i hope that answers that question a uh, last question uh, let's take last or maybe one or two fine uh, yeah, 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 yeah so yeah. one question games versus movies versus tv series versus all netflix hbo and all this thing if someone chooses to be an animator mm -hmm. If someone chooses to be an animator, like learn to be an animator. If someone is joining an institute and they say like, uh, I want to be an animator or or VFX artist or modeling artist mm -hmm. or this thing. I mean, what options it opens for them or like, can they just learn animation and then choose where they want to be or how does it go? Like, I hope this one will help most of you. So like I, I didn't get where the, uh, if, if if there are like nowadays if we see like animation is all over like sometimes in yes, TV yes, sometimes yes, in movies yes, yes, yes. if we see Netflix as series Discovery Channel yes, has like yes, its yes. channel to that yes. HBO has HBO Kids and all this so if someone enrolls to be an animator mm -hmm. which is to learn mm -hmm. like let's say like AID, mm -hmm. someone someone applies mm -hmm. okay I want to learn animation mm -hmm. so once they graduate from here whether it be like diploma or degree can they join games also movies also or they have to go through different problems. yes 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 yeah so they can join anything they can join tv animation because the animation is animation okay only the medium is uh, separate they can join tv animation where uh, the focus is not so much on quality they at least you know by 20 30 percent they reduce the quality for tv animation because they want everything to be done faster in movie they do not compromise on quality uh, but the length increases so you are given more time to do the shot or even if in games so after i think uh, one student joined one of the gaming studios here when he passed out uh, he learned animation and since you know animation and all the principles or oh, everything uh, uh, about gaming you can do in animation also so there is no such thing as if I learn animation, can I join a uh, gaming studio, can I join TV, can I join uh, production house. So once you learn animation, you can join anywhere. And in fact, in our uh, animation program, we, uh, we teach gaming animation also. So uh, that is also, you know, covered. Uh, yes, right. Exactly. Uh, we have uh, the chosen one sort. One person asked, uh, I am good at realistic sketch portraits, but I am interested in animation. Is it worth doing realistic drawing or cartoony drawing? Both are both are good. So uh, in animation, a lot of times what you want to do is exaggerate the stuff. If I am squinting my eyes here and you draw my realistic face, uh, you squint my eyes here. But if you're doing a cartoony, what you do, you just, you know, push everything. You, you imagine Bugs Bunny when you're pushing everything so that is the time cartoony will definitely help you so uh, as an artist you should not be just focusing on very realistic because artist is artist he can do cartoony he can do uh, buildings he can do uh, realistic he can do a lot of stuff so uh, uh, to answer the question that can i do animation definitely you can do animation uh, i think you will uh, benefit from animation more because you will be studying a lot of animation movies 
and how to push expression in poses and it will reflect in your animation your animation will come out really good since you are a good artist let's wrap up with one last question from my side since mm. i am also an animator i would like to ask uh, you this thing mm. like what was the most fun time in your journey like from start to now like what was the most fun time like you had really fun and what was the most like kind of deadline centric like stressful time like if you would like to share that it will help out everyone understand exactly uh, i think my fun time would be exactly the thing which uh, people will call it overboard <laughs> <laughs> because i tell you uh, that bonding in our among animators grew so much we were working till one in the night and at one o'clock we will go out of the studio all bunch of animators go out on a on a side uh, a footpath uh, uh, eatery and we'll go and we'll talk sometimes we'll have a drink or something <laughs> and we'll come back and we'll just rest sometimes we will just sleep in the studio and sometimes we'll rest and then again 3 o'clock we'll get up and start working till uh, uh, 6 in the morning and then 6 we go for you know go home and then uh, we take a bath and we come and so stay two days three days we'll work third day we'll take full sleep and fourth day we'll start working again for for me that was uh, you know a real fun time and a lot of my good friends uh, uh, who are there in the industry were part of that crunch time and that's where your bonding grew yeah because this thing animation and all will be there the companies will keep changing but what you create is the bond uh, uh, when you're there in the studio and the fun time you had during that time was was well, for me uh, was definitely uh, great any last words or last line you want to say to people who are very new to animation they're looking to join some institute or someone who is worried about like animation I'll, it would be good for me or should i go for some technical job which will have which will give me more certainty over uh, this thing any anything you want to share i would just that? say that uh, follow your heart because uh, uh, like i said we had two engineering students before this and they really wanted to do animation but they did engineering and they came back here and they are at a job so they just followed the heart so don't cheat yourself if you think you are a very good coder you are a scripter you are good with programming do that don't come with animation because again this will be burden and you will say oh animation is burden and i see people who say that animation is fun but for me it is a burden so they say no there's a saying that if you are having uh, fun at your job then it is not work anymore okay so uh, don't treat it as a job treat is as you are you know extension of your hobby if you like sketching uh, you want to you know uh, do uh, pursue modeling if you want to pursue matte painting if you want to pursue uh, texturing do come definitely come but if you think you are uh, good with math you good with numbers then maybe accountant or uh, uh, maybe a financial guy maybe a stock broker or something is good for you mm-hmm. so there is no such thing see uh, animators i do not take pride among my self among my friends there are i have friends who are financial analysts i have friends who are uh, who are businessmen and when i sit among them i am just another fellow i do not take pride that i have worked on dreamworks movies and all because they say they are working for uh, uh, standard chart they say they are working for uh, um, reuters if if someone is in the news agency but it's just that they followed their heart they wanted a story to be told in form of a news reporting so one of my friend joined as a journalist and he is doing very well so just follow your heart nice so i guess we can wrap up with this thing to conclude uh, if we have to take like if you have to have three take aways from this mm-hmm. one would be like uh, don't go for all like if someone is just numbers in the softwares if i recall it right uh, that was a big uh, thing you mentioned and stressed on yes don't go for the Uh, number, number of software software you, sort of software yes. you mentioned like pretty clear like software yes. like in a week like you can just youtube and you can learn a sort of but go for like more skill and yes. who will make you good animator and uh, second thing uh, that you mentioned i feel was uh, vfx versus animation you clarified that pretty nicely like with examples and all that vfx is more of like effects as like the full form is also same and animation is if you are more interested in this thing so so choose for yourself make conscious decision that is the second thing yes. and third thing you'll say uh, bonding thing <laughs> <laughs> i would say it's a fun thing like if you have to add like animation is a fun industry 
and you can see other interviews also and all, all this thing it's it's a fun industry yeah. yes. i would say like just to like uh, make it balance out with this thing yeah. so yeah that's it uh, for today and uh, these are uh, one of the faculties in uh, animation and uh, we also keep learning a lot from him in uh, over here and uh, it's been uh, like you'll get to know a lot of things like once you join uh, some kind of institute or just call up or something so just to wrap up we have uh, we are on facebook instagram and uh, youtube also you can check other resources website is also there number and everything is mentioned so if someone is interested we do run uh, short term long term courses in animation uh, yeah thanks a lot yeah some people are just saying they appreciate it thank you for amazing talk uh, yeah it's it's nice like it's it's very informative the whole purpose was to share a light from uh, his perspective because he's a very wide range of projects he has worked on so yes yeah, so we do offer short term long term courses online courses offline courses if someone is interested or someone just want to understand more just uh, feel free to share your questions and uh, hopefully we'll have a, a couple more of these Uh, mostly like uh, every week we'll uh, like there is always yes. something or other coming up yes. with different different faculties this was uh, with gautam sir who has a very rich experience in animation industry we will be having with some it's sir or sir when there's a lot of this keep coming up you can check the past facebook lives past instagram lives and uh, igtv we are on youtube also so please feel free to check all the resources there are a lot of wisdom shared on that uh happy that aid is reaching out yes like we just want to help out uh, with this thing it's an informative session it's it's good like uh, you guys uh, yeah because so. uh, we thought there were some certain common questions where students will keep asking again and again and there was sort of some uh, misconceptions about so we thought we'll just go live uh, reach out to students and this clear the air uh, we are not talking about this is bad that is good uh, this software is good that is bad Uh, this department is good that is bad we just want to clarify the certain rules for certain department so but just... as a institute aid is good we <laughs> 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 have we have to be like very because uh, yes because but have, but yeah because uh, we believe in our sectors like kudin no, sir is no, no, there but uh, so personally yeah like it's just i we like we like like students and students also be the same but anyway so we'll have like some more session uh, give your feedback and give like uh, whatever questions you guys have just post this thing once we have enough question we'll do another session with uh, uh, another mentor another from another topic so it depends on okay so i guess that's it and uh, any last words or <laughs> okay fine i guess uh, that's it and uh, we'll wrap this up Thank you guys. Thank you so much for yes, joining. Yes, yes. Number and all is already there. Information. Yes, yes. Please do reach out. Uh, you know, if you want to come down or something, meet us. We can definitely will be helpful. I, I mean, as much as we can, we'll definitely mm. try to help you guys. Or we'll be at least we'll be like very straightforward. Like what is there? What is instead of just saying hashtag VFX artist? Or, I mean, <laughs> if it is, yeah. I mean, that, that's it. we don't want to extend it any further. That's okay. it. Uh, bye guys. Guess. Bye bye. Take care. Bye. Stand still, right? Hmm. Yeah.